All right, this is part one on solving trigonometric equations. All right, so I've got uh, a few examples here. All right, here are the directions. We want to solve uh, the following equation analytically over the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we're looking for all the real numbers between 0 and 2 pi that make this equation true. Okay, so just like before, where our goal is to figure out what x is. Uh, well, before we get to that stage, we want to isolate the trig function, right? So we're going to add 1 to both sides, then divide both sides by 2. So we would write this as cosine x equals 1 half. Right? And we'd say, okay, now we're looking for some number whose cosine is equal to a half. And that number has to be between 0 and 2 pi. So we're looking for an angle, right? That's essentially what we're talking about here. So the question is, what quadrant would your angle be in if... Um, the cosine of that angle was one half, right? Well, x would have to be in quadrant one or quadrant four, right? Because in quadrants one and quadrant four, cosine is a positive is a positive value. All right, so we're going to have um, two solutions, right? So the question is now we're looking for that x equals the arc cosine of one-half. So what angle has a cosine that's a half? Well, that would be pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Pi over 3 being in quadrant 1, 5 pi over 3 being in quadrant 4. Right? We're only going one time around the circle between 0 and 2 pi here. Okay? All right, and so that those are the solutions that are in our interval. Those, if you take either one of those numbers and plug them in for x up here, you get a true statement. All right, let's try another one. All right, 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, what I'd like you guys to be able to see is that this is really similar to a, a quadratic equation. Right? Remember a quadratic equation? Uh, and so, how would we deal with quadratic equations? Well, we, we factored them, right? Or we used the quadratic formula or whatnot. Well, in this case, they, they, this one does factor. And so we factor this into 2 sine x plus 1 and sine x minus 1 equals 0. All right, so everybody see that if we think of this as a quadratic equation, then we can factor this left side into 2 sine x plus 1 times sine x minus 1. And then um, we, uh, what do we do with each of these factors? Well, you take each factor, set it equal to zero, just like before, and you solve each one of these little mini equations here. So sine x equals negative one half, and over here we have sine x equals one. All right, so sine x equals negative one half in between zero and two pi. Uh, what quadrants would x have to be in for this first equation right here? Well, if sine's negative, then x has to be in quadrant three and quadrant four. All right, so where is the sine, what angle has a sine that's equal to negative one-half? Well, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. All right, and then what angle has a sine of x that's equal to 1? Well, that's pi over 2. All right, so there are three solutions to this particular equation. All right, there you go. If you take any one of these numbers and plug them in for x up here, you would get a true statement. Again, we're restricting ourselves to find the numbers between 0 and 2 pi that make this equation true. All right, so now let's look at example 3. 2 cosine squared plus 2 cosine x minus 1. All right, so again, we've got essentially a quadratic equation. Uh, the dilemma this time is it doesn't factor. So what will solve every quadratic equation? Well, the quadratic formula. But instead of just saying x equals negative b plus or minus blah, 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 it's going to be cosine x, right? That's your variable, so to speak. So cosine of x is equal to, all right, so b would be 2. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4a, a is 2, and c is negative 1, all over 2a, okay, from the quadratic formula. Right, so that means then the cosine of x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 all over 4, right, which goes to negative 1 plus or minus 
radical 3 over 2 when you do the arithmetic there. So we have the cosine of x equals negative 1 plus the square root of 3 all over 2, and the cosine of x equals negative 1 minus the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so uh, let's look at this first one. Negative 1 plus the square root of 3 all divided by 2. All right, so the cosine of x, well, we'll go to an approximation here. So that's about point three six six zero three. All right, so then what quadrant would x be in if the cosine of it's going to be positive? So it would be in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4 again. All right, so let me scroll up here for a second. Right, so x is equal to arc cosine of 0 0.36603. All right, so now to figure this out, we're going to pull out our calculator. But make note, we want to make sure that we're in the right mode. Remember, we're looking for uh, numbers that are between 0 and 2 pi, so that means we're using radians. Okay, we're using radians. So make sure your calculator is in radian mode before you find the arc cosine of 0 0.36603. When you do that, you get x to be equal to 1.1961. Okay, that's 1.1961 radians. And again, we're, we're rounding off, we're just approximating here. Okay, so if we're looking for an angle um, whose cosine is a positive number, we're talking angles that are in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. This one down here that we just found is in quadrant 1. So we can use it as the reference angle to figure out what the angle is in quadrant 4. Right, so this one um, is in quadrant one. So how are we going? I'm going to scroll up again. So how do we find the one that's in quadrant four? Well, remember all the way around the circle is two pi, and so if you want to come back into quadrant four, we have to do two pi minus the reference angle, 1.1961, which is about 5.0861. Seven two somewhere in that range, okay. And this one is the one that's in quadrant four. Everybody with me? So we have two solutions over here. We've got this one and this one. Okay, so there are two solutions. Now let's come over here to the cosine of x equals negative one minus the square root of three over two. That means the cosine of x equals negative 1.36603 and when you do arc cosine in your calculator for that one the arc cosine of negative 1.36603 you're gonna get an error right everybody understand why cosine goes between negative 1 and 1 when you're dealing with real numbers we can't take the cosine of some real number and get a number that's larger than one or less than negative one so this this over here doesn't even have a solution in the dealing with real numbers this has no solution so there's nothing we can uh, we can do about that so therefore we'll just kind of say alright no solution over here so there are only two solutions to this original equation and that would be 1.1961 and 5.0872 uh, both those radian measures Okay. So yes, we can use old tools from algebra to help us solve trig equations. And uh, when you're given um, the interval between 0 and 2 pi, you want your solutions to be between 0 and 2 pi, then you're looking for all the numbers that are in that interval that make, it, that make your equation true. All right, so make sure you see part two of solving trigonometric equations. Um, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.